All right, my friends. So I was the announcer for the volleyball game last night, and our, our fans were great, mostly, but there were some buttholes because um, there's always that amount of people in every activity you ever do in life. Um, but just as a reminder, you shouldn't ever, ever, ever use the other team's personal names and insult them or their moms, <laughs> okay? You shouldn't use the term pig or cow or you suck. That pretty much covers most of it. We okay with that? And it's like, it was sort of embarrassing because it was a butt kicking. Like it wasn't even close. And I was told you guys played terrible. Is that Did you feel that way? I thought it was fine, but it was a butt kicking. And then we had four dudes that were just jerks. So try and do your best. Um, you know, do rowdy right, as I say every single game, except for I forgot to last night because it was my first volleyball game in a while. So it's my fault. I'll take the blame. Um, all right, welcome back to AP. Um, so usually every day if I'm prepared, which first try, I am super prepared for AP typically because I have no class second or third hour. So I have two hours to just kick back, put my feet up and think, all right, what are we gonna do in AP today? Um, just kidding, I do other stuff, but usually I'm really well prepared. Third try, you'll just come in and I'll be like, I don't know what we're doing. Let's open this thing and let's find out together. But so first try, we're ready to roll. So here's the plan for today. I'll usually have a gray page. It says plan for the day. Discuss the Canvas page again. That shouldn't take too long. Discuss what is on the test for chapter one, because that is not very long away in school days from now. It'll be early next week, because chapter one is really short. Don't panic. It's like... You learn this stuff in third, fifth, and seventh grade, probably. I'm good. Don't even worry about me. I'm right here. I'm still alive. All right. Well, luckily, this has a picture on it. I know who this is, but I swear she's not. Haney's not in this class, right? She's in first hour. OK. I can see why they're confused because right now is the first hour of this day, but it's fourth hour. So, okay. Oh, I'll lose that forever. All right, here we go. So let me move my broken glass container before I fall on my broken glass. Oh. All right. Then we'll talk about the textbook, which is online. So that's going to be fine. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about content, okay? Then on the right side, today's lecture is intended to cover sections 1.1 through 1.3. I will never guarantee that I will cover everything that I say I'm gonna cover. Don't even ask me to, but sometimes I might go farther, but that's pretty rare. Um, so that we'll cover those sections hopefully, and they have the following assigned problems 1.2, and then those numbers and 1.3 in those numbers. Now it's a tiny bit confusing. So that's why we're gonna go over the Canvas page real quick. So hopefully you can find exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, bottom left corner, you know today was a success when you can classify matter as a compound element or mixture. It's, that's not really that hard, I promise. Um, distinguish between physical and chemical properties and changes. That's not that hard either. And then distinguish between an intensive and an extensive property. Um, you've probably never heard of those and they're not that bad. They're, they're a little bit different because they're new to you, but not really that big a deal. Um, so let's go ahead and talk real quick about the Canvas page. We'll see if I even have one open here. Sure, let's go here. Um, so you would go to your Canvas page, and you'd be here. You could tell last night was the last day for online driver's ed. I corrected stuff at 1045, and when I woke up, there were 16 more things to grade. Um, all right, so anyway, welcome to AP Chemistry. Textbook info, we'll talk about that. The syllabus we talked about, a few of you have turned in the syllabus assignment. Um, anyway. The daily plan is not up yet, but it will just say, hey, on September 1st, we did this. 
And then sometimes there'll be a video link, sometimes there won't be. But what I wanna talk about um, are the practice problems. If you click on this link, it gives you the assignment. You just do it on paper, take a picture of it and upload it. Are you comfortable with that now? Um, it's 2021, you should know how to do that by now. You can find this link right here, or it's just in the textbook. It's like the chapter after, or the section after the last section. This is in PDF version, which to me is a little bit easier to find. Okay, so it's a tiny bit tricky how these people have numbered things. So the homework is ordered by section. So 1.1 1 .1 or 1.E, uh, it's just the exercises. They don't have any problems for section 1.1. So the next section is 1.2, conceptual problems. If you bounce back to this, you have 1.2, 5, 6, 9, 11, and 15. So coming back here, we would be 1.2, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 15. Sort of okay with that? Now, then it, this is why it's kind of dumb. Then it says they switch. These are conceptual. These are numeric. So you're still in section 1.2, but you now have four and nine. So coming back here, so you're still in section 1.2, but it switches to numerical problems. And you just do four, if I remember, and nine. Okay. Then it says section 1.3. Oh, by the way, here's all the answers to every question I asked you. The answers are ordered by section as well. But there's no point in just copying everything. Like try it first and then go check your work. Um, find out what is wrong before you take a test. That's what homework is for. That's what the quizzes will do are for. Um, all right, anyway, so there, that was the answers right there. Then you get to section 1.3, and there was some of those that were assigned for 1.3, 1, 2, 3, and 6. You kind of all right on how to find them. It's a little weird, but you'll get used to it pretty quick. Now, this is not the only place that you're going to find these things. It's on that homework page as well. So on the practice problems, it says the required ones at the bottom. Now, right here it says it's recommended that you do as many problems as you need to become proficient. If you need more practice, do more of the problems. Now, I don't know any human that's ever done that, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> if you don't get it, do more, check the work. If something's going wrong every single time, uh, come in in the morning. If you want my undivided attention, I'm here usually by 6.30. We can, we can learn a lot. Now, you won't, so come during B time. And uh, it'll be a little more crowded then, but I can still help you. Um, but don't usually come after school. I start driver's ed at 310. If it's a five minute question, we can knock that out, but there's hardly ever a five minute question in AP chemistry. Okay, so once again, to find the reading, you have the textbook. And it's just this chemistry, the central science. And it takes you really to the online version, not the actual textbook. What I would do, uh, which I did, I just put the little like box with the arrow and I added it to my home screen. That's what I would do for you. Then you don't have to go through Canvas and click on links. You just, it's right there on your phone, click it and it takes you to the exact spot you wanna be. Um, if you want to be even more efficient, you can add each chapter, but that's like upper level phone nerd right there, um, but you can get there quick. So section one, or sorry, chapter one, and then today, these, these three. Studying chemistry, that's not really even a thing. Like it, it is, but there's whatever, it's a piece of cake. Okay, questions on any type of navigation or the textbook. All right, last year I switched to a different book and it lasted three units. I was like, holy cow, because it was 10 times the amount of reading than this one. So um, go for it. If you really, really want, you can download a PDF. 
You can't download the whole book because it's over a thousand pages long, but you get the PDF for each chapter if you feel so inclined. Um, everything's there that you need. So textbook info is the, in the admin thing at the top right here. So welcome and Zoom link, textbook info. Um, but in every chapter section, reading assignment, that will just take you right to that as well. So there's multiple ways to get to the same place. All right, you're right, thumbs up if you feel okay, you can be successful at that. All right, okay. Um, I do have a girl in another class that said, Davidson, I don't have the internet. <laughs> uh, if you don't have the internet, I can, I can check you out one of these books and it will be sort of similar, but like the content will be similar. The homework problems are extremely different. Um, so hopefully you have the internet or you can use an iPad here at the school with me. Um, all right, so that's that. Now, the next thing I wanted to just make sure, do you see where it says elements and polytonic ion memorization list dash two? I don't know where the dash two came from. Please start that like as soon as you can. There are, there's not a, a ton of things you have to memorize in this class. Uh, this is the majority of everything you have to memorize in this class. You're required to memorize 50 elements. If you click on this link, it just takes you to the Quizlet with them on there already typed for you. Um, thank you. Are you the one that came earlier? Okay. Don't even worry about it. It's that one. Did I get it right? Oh, <laughs> they're triplets. Give me a break. That one was hard. All right. Um, so anyway, it already has the, the Quizlet so you can just memorize, start memorizing these. They're on the test, which is like a week from now. If you look like at the test, I have it right here. Um, it's not very long. But you have to be able to do that. There's 50 of them. I assure you, it's not as hard to memorize them as you think. You know a third of them already. Like there's very few people on the planet that don't know O is oxygen. Right? I hope. All right. So you girls memorized them. Wasn't that bad last year? You had chemistry last year, didn't you? Not that bad, right? Palmer? Oh, you weren't here for this, were you? You came in the part like halfway through A, didn't you? All right, she was from Texas, so we didn't make her do it. But anyway, they're not that bad. You can find them there, um, elements and polyatomic ion. On chapter one's test, we will test the 50 elements right there. On the next unit test, which is chapter two and three, we do these, which are called polyatomic ions, which are significantly harder to memorize. Polyatomic ions, you have to know their name, you have to know their formula, and you have to know their charge. So you have acetate right here. You got to know it's C2H3O2 and that it's a negative one. If it's just a dash, it means a negative one. So that would be, whoops, that'd be acetate. Okay, NH4, you got to know it's a plus one. It's called ammonium. HCO3, we got hydrogen carbonate, it's a negative one. And that can be tricky because there's CO3 minus two and that's carbonate. But hey, well, this one has a hydrogen in front. Um, anyway, it's, it's doable, um, but I would, I would start now. Don't try and memorize it the night before the test. All right, if you have regular chemistry, we have the naming schemata um, and it looked like the naming schemata in, in regular chemistry is this thing right here. And an AP, you gotta memorize it. <laughs> but it's like memorizing math. How many have memorized every single answer to every single math problem ever? Not a human on the planet. You figure math out and then you can just, you can figure the, out the answer, right? So you're not gonna memorize, you'll memorize this piece. This part you'll just, will teach you how to do the process. And weird people will enjoy it like a lot. The rest of us were like, what's wrong with those weird people? Anyway, you can find those resources. 
Oh no. Why do I have that on? Uh, hey, hey, Corbin. Welcome to class. I don't know if my audio will work for you to talk. Um, I'll set that up in a minute. Um, anyway, so you can find that once again in chapter one, elements and polyatomic ion memorization. Let's at least start on the elements, uh, get on that. Okay, the rest of the stuff we'll just get into. So let's head back to the plan for today. We discussed the Canvas page. We discussed what's on the test. If you will memorize the 50 elements, you will know how to classify um, matter, distinguish physical properties, intensive and extensive, and know how to do density problems. You can get an A on the test. All right, there, it's not a hard test. This test is designed. I used to not have a test till the end of chapter three. And that was like a month. And parents were like, what are they doing? So I gave you, I give you an easy test in chapter one. So you have an A for like a month and then you get a D. All right, so we'll be good. Um, all right, this QR code, you don't really have to scan it, it was just taking you to that. Uh, I have ignored Tiffany. Did, you haven't met in this class, right? No. Go ahead. Anything you wanna say? <laughs> It is extremely likely. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be humble here. She's probably smarter than I am. Well, the daughter is dumb. Let's just be <laughs> honest here, okay? The man, no, that's fine. I've told it to his face. Um, I'm just going to put this out here. Tiffany, hopefully you can still respect me. This was my graduating GPA in high school. How did you do, how was yours compared to that? Uh, Higher. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, no, like you said, her resume is like, oh, I did all this, did all this, did all this. So I was like, oh, I, I played ultimate in college. <laughs> I like kissed a lot of girls. Um, anyway, very impressive resume. That's all I'm saying. If you need help, you, did you take AP chemistry in high school? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you how I took AP chemistry. I said, uh, no, um, I'll take normal chemistry as a sophomore and I will get a C plus in that class. So I did. Um, but listen, I'm pretty good at teaching it, in my opinion. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do really well. So here we go. Uh, I think it's time to talk about content. Am I okay with that? The first thing we're gonna do, if you're a note taker, fantastic. If you're not, uh, you don't have to, but I would encourage you anytime I do a demonstration, no matter what your learning style, you should at least draw the picture, um, name it, and then, like label the parts. The AP test nowadays is, there's a lot of drawing and labeling of things. It's kind of weird. Less math uh, than it used to be. In 2013, it changed. When did you take AP? All right, so she, she took the, it's easier, but still fives are hard. Blaine's get fives and Durant's get fives. Um, but, there's a lot more drawing and explaining things. So this, this is called an electrolysis machine, all right? It has a really weird name, I don't even remember. Uh, it's super expensive, just for that piece of glass, it's $280. Um, but what we're going to do with it is called electrolysis or electrolysis. Who's had Bert enough to know what lysis means? Anybody yet? okay i'll tell you electro means electricity that one's not hard 
Lysis, as he teaches it, means to rip your face off. It means to tear apart. So um, if we talk about electro, electrolysis or electrolysis is how we say it usually in English, we're talking about ripping something apart using what? Electricity. So what I have up here, I have water. Uh, it doesn't look like water. It's water with green food coloring in it so that you can see it better. All right, and then let me zoom in on this real fast. I think it's number four. I can't see my camera feed. Um, let's see. All right, there we go. I know it's tiny. Noah, but you might be able to switch depending on how you're watching. Or not Noah, my bad. Noah's gone for a while. Uh, Corbin, all right. So what we have, we have water with green food coloring. And then I have to tell you, one of the first things you should know is water does not conduct electricity. You think it does, but that's because water's dirty. So in my electrolysis water, I've added some sulfuric acid, just a tiny, tiny bit to make the water conduct electricity. Okay, what we have here is water, a box that's gonna supply electricity to two electrodes. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And if you're in the back, I know, like there's no way on earth you're really gonna see what's going on. But I flip this switch on and then raise your hands if you can see bubbles. All right, so it, okay, I got a smart, smart aleck in the front row. Let me stop share for a minute and we'll bring this video over here. So, Hey, there's my face or my daughter's face. That doesn't really help either, I guess. But oh, <clears throat> I gotta look fit. All right, so we have some bubbles here. We have some bubbles here. Fair enough. Cool beans. I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes while we talk about the rest. We'll just do some notes. We'll come back to this. Someone in the front row, when it gets roughly like to here, tell me like one time I just forgot about it and taught and then it was it was empty you'll notice the color change there's a reason behind that but that's not the point today uh, we'll talk about that but mostly uh, we want to talk about this whole process and what we're doing and what it has to do with what we're doing okay so electrolysis but now let's move on to our notes you ready all right, so, oh, uh, if you want to follow along in my lecture, you can scan that QR code. This, I forgot, I will link this as well. I'll put the link to every one of the PowerPoints. I don't use PowerPoint, but they're pretty much the same. Um, so you can follow along, because I don't, I don't slow down if you're a slow note taker. I can't, I'd be here for two years and you'd all fail the test. All right, so chemistry, and please, please, please don't write every single word on everything. Like if you're already writing, chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes, and you're drawing the icebergs and trying to shade it so you get the depth, like you're wasting major time here. Chemistry is the study of matter. We have the states, three, all three states demonstrated here, but really we're just talking about what stuff's made of and how they interact, all right? Chemistry to me is an amazing science. It's fun, it's hands-on, but it's also kind of hard because we're really talking about the smallest things that are in our world. In physics, I love physics. I'm a physics major. It was so much easier to understand, like, why is my pen falling? Like, oh, I can see my pen fall. All right, in chemistry, it's a little harder because you don't always see how the atoms interact. Um, all right, the scientific method, don't write a single thing here. You're gonna learn the scientific method over the next nine months. It's not a slide. The scientific method is that you have some sort of problem you want to figure out. So you come up with ways to figure it out. You do it every single day in your life. You did it when you came to school. You're kind of doing it every minute. You're trying to think about finding some sort of girl or boy to be your best friend forever. Uh, you'll do it as a parent. You do it as a coach. You do it as an athlete. You adapt based on observations. That's the scientific method, all right? You'll do it a lot. All right, matter. 
this is the first definition maybe, but I feel like you might know it. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So the only thing that really doesn't matter are your feelings. <laughs> oh, every year, every slide right there. I'm ready to roast your feelings. The slide doesn't matter, but the board that it's made or that you're viewing it on does. All right, so here's just a couple examples. We have hydrochloric acid right here. We have iron. We put them together, a reaction happens. We now have a solution um, of iron three chloride. We have the iron still, and then we dry it out and we now have the solid. So there's been some changes, but they're all matter. The matter is all still there. It's just rearranged. Um, all right, atoms are the building blocks of matter. So they're, they're what make everything up. Now there are parts of atoms, we'll talk about that, but for now, the atoms what makes everything. It's the, it's the, it's the two by one Lego, like it's the, the smallest part and everything else expands on that. Um, all right, okay, real quick here. Uh, you will see pure elements like oxygen, and it has two blobs, we'll talk about that. You will see compounds, you got water, you have carbon dioxide, ethanol, um, that's the like E85 gas you put in, the, the extra 15 is ethanol. You have ethylene glycol, that's in a ton of stuff um, that, that we use. It could be a toothpaste, hairspray, it could be of foods. Um, you have aspirin, if you've ever taken aspirin. The coolest lab I ever did in college is I made this stuff in my AP, not AP, in my organic chemistry lab. We made aspirin and we said, hey, like, can we, can we use this? And then he was like, no, because if you screwed up, you could kill yourself. I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, but it was cool. It was white, just like layers of crystalline powder. Did you make it too? Yeah. Did they let you eat it? Nope. nope. <laughs> Yeah, oh, pure caffeine. That sounds delicious. Thanks for the idea. That was great timing. Yeah, if you ever take organic, and this is Tom's opinion, it's the worst class you'll ever take and the coolest class you'll ever take. It's a lot like this one. Yeah, uh, it, it's so cool and awful. All right, moving on. All right, so each kind of element is made up of the same kind of atom. So anytime you find oxygen, it's an oxygen atom. You don't ever find it with carbon, right? Now you can find a compound where they're combined like carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, but then you wouldn't say it's oxygen. You'd name it as its compound. All right, now we we'll to talk just real quick about oxygen. Oxygen looks like that. If I were to draw a picture of sodium, so like Na, it would just look like a single circle. Throughout the year, very often, we're gonna talk about monatomic atoms and diatomic atoms. Based on my drawings, what does monatomic mean? One, when, when you find just a pure elemental piece of sodium, you can really isolate it into one, one atom but oxygen is typically stuck to itself. It's a diatomic atom. It's much more stable to find oxygen as O2 instead of just O. Um, o in your body is considered a free radical and those are not good if I remember right. Biology though was in 1994, so it's been a while. Um, but the diatomic elements, you gotta, you gotta memorize them. I have them right here, I think. You don't have to scan that. But if you remember that the diatomic elements, if you look over at my screen, I don't have my pointer, but they're H, that's on the top left. And then go over to the top right, you see the red ones? It's not all the red ones, but it's a lot of them. It's H, N, O, F. So N, O, F along the top, you see where I'm at? Isaac, point your hand straight up. So they're just right up there, all right? And then when you get to F, you go C, L, B, R, and I. Those are your diatomic atoms. 
And what that means is if you were going to draw hydrogen, you'd really put two of them stuck together. And we'll talk about why eventually. But for now, just know sometimes you have diatomic, sometimes you have monatomic. If it's not a diatomic, it's basically monatomic. There's some exceptions, but we're good enough. Okay. Um, what's that? that? That looks great. So we'll just turn this off and I'll come back to it. We have forever today, right? It's, it's in a few slides. All right, now, even though something's a diatomic, um, it's still considered the, the atom. Um, a compound is made up of two or more different kinds of elements. So this is a definition you should know. If you need to write it down, write it down. If you want to take a picture of it, take a picture of it. But you should know a compound, it's two different types of atoms. So the diatomic atom of oxygen, we would say it's a compound. Tell your partner why you wouldn't call a diatomic oxygen a compound. What's the red flag? Tell them, please. What do you think? There you go. Perfect. All right. So my lab partner is a genius. And she said, it's because they're not different. Right? That's the key indicator. If you have the same type of atom bonded to the same type of atom, you still have the atom. It's just called a diatomic. Uh, I didn't mean to go forward there. Sorry. All right. But carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water, ethanol, it consists of multiple types of atoms that are hanging out together. Uh, for a lot of reasons. We have a year to learn about all the reasons they want to party the way that they party. Um, all right, next. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because there's like, and I'm going to say this a lot in chemistry, there's a whole chapter just dedicated to states of matter. But you should know at least there's solid liquids and gases. And the state of matter is tied to its temperature, typically. All right, gases are the hot things. So that's me. Uh, Okay, liquids, that's the mediums, and the solids are the cold. All right, and we'll talk all about that when we get to chapter 11. Next, all right, don't, don't write like everything, it's gonna build on itself. So classifying matter is a pretty important skill. I would not even draw this personally, I would just screenshot it on the notes that I would have already had on my phone. Um, but you can also find this um, in the book. So first off, when we classify matter, this is just like what we call a flow chart. We have matter, we've discovered it. We're gonna ask these questions. We're gonna say, is it uniform throughout? Now that's just kind of a tricky thing. What we mean is like, if you look at it, does it all look the same? So like if you were to look at a cup of water, typically, unless you're from Corinne probably, the water just looks nice and clear. Just kidding. I don't know what Korean water looks like, but I ain't drinking it. I'm telling you that right now. You from Korean? Did that hurt your feelings? Okay, good. All right, but you look at the, okay, how about this? This all looks like green water, doesn't it? Okay, so it would be considered uniform throughout. If I dropped like some Oreos in there and just shook it, <laughs> it would be disgusting but it would not be uniform throughout, right? There'd be some parts that were green, some parts that were white, some parts that were black, and it would look disgusting. So uniform, is it all the same when you look at it? That's what that means, all right? If the answer is no, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Now, you have to absolutely know what heterogeneous means. Hetero, the prefix means different. And I believe you probably know that from health class by now. Hetero is different or non-uniform. So genius just means makeup, essentially. So if it's different makeup, like composition, then we say it is heterogeneous. Okay? So if it, you look at it and it doesn't look all the same, like, hey, I'm pretty sure this is probably a heterogeneous mixture, meaning there's more than one thing in there. Now, is there more than one thing in here? Yeah, there's water, there's green food coloring, and those, there is sulfuric acid. It looks the same, 
So it's not there, but it's coming up. All right, next up. If it is uniform throughout, we call it homogeneous or typically homogeneous. I don't know why we say heterogeneous and homogeneous, but that's just kind of how we roll. Do they roll that way in Missouri? Yeah, yeah this is the way life is. We okay with that? All right, so we would say this is homogeneous. It looks the same all throughout. Okay, please make sure you have both those words locked in. They're vocab words, but if you just understand heterosexual and homosexual, it's not hard to figure out, right? Hetero, they're opposites. Homo, they're the same. All right, next. Here is where it gets tricky. Does it have a variable composition? You're like, wait a minute, Davidson, you just told me this is all the same, but it is not. So we can have things that are homogenous, like if I poured salt and I poured sugar in the same container, if you didn't look close, you'd have no idea. It'd be homogenous, right? But it would not be, all right? So then we would have what we call a homogenous mixture. And that's what this green solution is. It is all the same, but it's not a pure substance. It has three parts. They all look the same. They combine and mix completely. So that's why we call it a mixture. And that one right there is a solution. Solutions, and we have a whole chapter about solutions. Don't even worry. It's the, it's, I love that chapter. It's hard, but it's cool. So we have all, that thing is a solution where everything mixed, but everything's not exactly the same. It has water, green food coloring, and sulfuric acid. Fair enough? Okay. So if you find it and it looks the same, it's either going to be a homogenous mixture or we're going to continue on because there's a no to that. If you find it and its composition is not changed, all right? And this would be under more scientific observations. This, these are harder. So if it does not have a variable composition, then we call it a pure substance. Now, this is not the end of our chart. Pure substances, we can keep on going. Can it be separated into simpler substances? Okay, so now I have something that is, it is uniform throughout and it doesn't have a variable composition, but I can actually break it into simpler substances uh oh. If I guess it's cannot first, I apologize. If it was homogeneous, if it did not have a variable composition and you cannot separate it down further, then we call it an element. An element is the building block of everything. So it's the thing we can't break any farther because everything goes up from there. Now, if this pure substance that doesn't vary can be separated, I'll probably have to scroll here again, then we have a compound. A compound is a pure substance that I can use chemical processes to break into pure substances. So what do I have right here? I have electrolysis. I'm using electricity to do what? What does Bert say? Tear your face off, rip apart, electrolysis of water. So tell your partner right now, what's in the tubes? What's in the tubes? All right, keep talking. I'm gonna walk around in here. What's in the tubes? There's some liquid in the tubes. There's gases in the tubes. Are you out? Liquids and gases? You don't know? Anybody know? Back row? There's sulfuric acid and there's water. 
there is no longer electricity in the tubes because I turned it off right here. Any ideas? Oh, finally, I love all of you, of course, but it took me that long to come around and get a right answer, Seely, right? All right, good job. Now, there was a lot of truths, that's true, but you didn't get the one I wanted, which is fine. Yeah, there is a liquid in the tube. That's the true fact. <laughs> there are gases in the tube. That's a true fact. Yes, there's sulfuric acid and water in the tubes, but we're looking right here at the top. I should have been more clear. At the top of the tube, what are these gases? They are hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, now my friends, This is the left side, sorry. It's been a year since I've had to teach like this, or three months. This is the right side. Tell the people that your lab partners, it's kind of hopefully easy. These are your lab partners. You work in threes and you work in twos, okay? Tell your lab partner in the left and the right, what do I have and why? I know I have hydrogen and oxygen, but now tell your partner, figure it out why, what's left and what's right and why. Don't give me a, a guess. That doesn't mean you learned anything. I won't put you on the spot for this one. All right, friends. Okay. So first off, don't judge my drawing, but we essentially have this side. We have the, we have this side. We're gonna say this is the left. You with me? We got like the, we got this side, we got the whatever's in the, there you go. You with me? Um, okay, I'm loving every second of this drawing. That doesn't make sense. You can't love a unit of time of a picture, but I did, so eat it. Okay, we got the left and we got the right. This is what I want you to do so I can see. On your paper, I want you to put H2 and O2 on whatever side you think they're on. So I'm gonna put my gas line here and my gas line here, right? So you tell me, I wanna walk around and I wanna be able to see which side you think is H2 and which side is O2. Now there's no social risk and there's no risk with me. I am not gonna think you're dumb if you get this one wrong. The only thing I will think is if you don't do it, I'll be like, okay, that's how we're gonna roll for nine months. That kid doesn't wanna do anything, all right? Thank you. I don't think you're dumb. I'm super proud you're taking this class. Thank you. I got great eyes, as long as it's 10 feet away from me. What do you think, Sky? Okay. Okay, will you do me a favor? Check with your partners. You probably already did, but make sure you match. If you don't match, fix it. Figure out who's right and who's wrong. All right, I don't know if I checked everyone's. What do you think? Okay. Okay, no problem. All right, so we'll get to the answer here in a second. Why did I set that down? I need that thing. <laughs> we'll get to the answer in a minute, but I wanna talk about this previous slide and what we did here. Now, pretend that it was just the clear water. The food coloring was just so you can see, cause it's hard to see clear in glass. 
and the sulfuric acid is so it conducts. But we'll just pretend this is clear water that we're doing electrolysis with. You okay with that? Okay, so we found it and we looked at the water and we thought, huh, is that uniform throughout? Yes, so we knew it was a homogenous thing. All right, we looked at it and it did not. This is the, this is ignoring the food coloring and the acid, Are you with me? We looked at water like, hey, it's variable, it's composition is completely pure. So then I thought, all right, well, it's a pure substance. The next thing I have to do uh, to figure it out, uh, to figure this part out from here to here, I have to do a chemical test. All right, I have to do something chemically to see if I can change it. And so I put it through electrolysis. I used electricity to split it apart. And if it was a pure element, it wouldn't have split apart. Um, it would have just sat there and done nothing. All right, so then we found out, oh, hey, it can be right here. It can be split apart into a, sorry, into its elements. So we knew that water was a compound because it could be split apart. The two gases that we made, those are elements of H2, that's hydrogen. It's a two because it's diatomic. When it's alone, it doesn't like to be alone, so it takes its friend to the bathroom with it. All right, it's probably a girl, let's just be honest. Then H2 and O2. All right, now, here's how we're gonna figure out if you're right or if you're wrong. Hydrogen makes a little pop. I thought I had the man, oh, they're over there. If you light hydrogen on fire, you'll hear like a whoop. That was pretty good. That, that was actually above average for Tom. I don't know what note that was, all your madrigals, and I don't even care. Okay, so one will make that little noise. It won't be that loud probably. And one won't do anything. It's kind of depressing. Everyone thinks, oh, oxygen's gonna be cool. It's gonna explode, it's gonna be loud. No, it's not gonna do anything. It will make my match burn brighter for a second. That's all it's gonna do. All right, so you tell me which side. I'm gonna put this over and collect the gas. This is pretty big, but we'll live with it. Do your right. Okay, so I'm gonna collect this gas. All right, I'm gonna put it right down here. I forgot this is not balanced. Whew. Then I'm gonna light this match. I'm just kidding, I got skills. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna put this over. Oh, I was pretty close. I almost had the exact pitch. <laughs> All right, so I did that. Well, let's double check. I gotta clean all that smoke out for a second. We know how that's been all summer. Am I right? It's actually a lot harder to get smoke out of a test tube than you would think. I could do it how I did it in high school, but <laughs> that's a joke. I never did any drugs ever in my entire life, okay? I'm positive. Okay, I got that. Now I'll collect this side and we'll see if it also pops. All right, so I got this. Usually I do this with a lot smaller one and it just stands up straight. I didn't think about what I was doing. All right, so we'll drop this in. <laughs> won't, 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 won't. Okay, so what did I prove based on what I told you would happen? I proved that which side was which? The right side was hydrogen. All right, if I turn this back on, and if you are close enough, you can see lots of bubbles on your right side and hardly any on the left. Okay, now I asked you why. If you were right, tell your partner why. Have a discussion. If you were wrong, think about, well, why? How did I not know that?
All right. So, my friends, about two thirds of you had it right and a third had it backwards. That doesn't mean two thirds will pass and one third won't. All right. It's the other way around. Let's be real. Um, but don't worry when you're wrong in chemistry. You can learn a lot from being wrong. All right. The scientific method doesn't demand that you're right every single time. Okay, now here's the liberal in me. This whole COVID thing and everyone complaining that scientists keep changing their minds. And so what does matter and all this, it means everything was a lie before. No, it doesn't. It's science. We take observations of what we know. We test those. And based on the observations, we come up with things. But like January 1st of 2020, no one had any idea about the properties and behaviors of COVID-19. We have learned over time. And as we learn, we adapt as human beings. All right, Palmer, do you play volleyball the same last night as you did the first day you played it? No, you learn in sports. Blaine, mountain biker, right? All right, are you as good today as you were the first day you got on a bike? No. We constantly in our lives are taking data and we are adapting. It doesn't mean that Blaine was an idiot for ever getting on a bike because he sucked the first day. It means he started the process of growth. And oftentimes the process of growth requires that you're wrong and then you learn from that wrong. Okay, in our lives, we frame being wrong in a really negative way. But in science, being wrong, there's no problem with that because it gives us another data point to go from. Like, hey, I got I to gotta know. I got to figure out why I got to know. And that leads to progress. So <clears throat> please don't in your whole life just think science is a bunch of crap because it changes. It is supposed to change. And that's why it isn't crap. Because <clears throat> if we based all of our knowledge on what the very first people that learned how to read knew, we would still be like, trying to figure out what two rocks would hit together to make a spark for our fire to eat our buffalo. Like it's just, we, we advance. We have new technology, make new discoveries, make new tests and come up with new information. That's the scientific method and it's amazing. All right, so what we did, we separated this and then we had hydrogen on the right, oxygen on the left. And then is there anyone willing to just tell me why you thought that? You don't have to. All right, Blaine. All right, so Tiffany, we're gonna say that's the correct answer for a minute. All right, because water is made out of H2O. So when you break a water molecule down, you should get how many hydrogens? Two of them. And how many oxygens? I have no idea what that looks like. That was a no look drawing. That's not bad. All right. We end up with twice the amount of hydrogen as we do oxygen. It's right there in the formula, H2O. So I am producing twice the amount of oxygens as I am the hydrogens. We can see it. We can see the, we can see the reaction. Okay. Now I, I said to Tiffany, this is, we're going to pretend it's the right answer because it is the right answer. This is a tiny bit more complicated than that. And we'll learn this process. It's the same idea, so it's, no one's wrong. But when we have H2O and we use electrolysis, it breaks down into H2 plus O2. But Delaney, there's a problem with that, right? What's the problem? It's not really balanced. So we end up with a two, a two, and a one. So like the most technical answer would be in the decomposition of water, we produce two moles, we'll learn what that word means, of H2 to every one of O2. Now that's different than what we said, but it's the same. It's because it's a two to one ratio. Thumbs up, we okay with that? Okay, so we've, we've had an element, sorry, we had a compound. We used a process to separate it into its pure substances, which are now elements and they follow the ratio of their chemical formula. Now there's actually a ton 
uh, about this. And we'll have a whole chapter on electricity and chemistry. It's called electrochemistry. Huh? It's the last chapter of the whole year and it's my least favorite because I always have to teach it in like two minutes. <laughs> I'm like, hey, test this tomorrow. Take your books out, look at chapter 17. Everyone good? And they're like, okay, <laughs> no wonder we failed this test. Um, all right, here we go. A sample, what'd you say? Yeah, the last two chapters, you're like, mm, sorry guys, your fault for talking in class. Because teachers, we're not good at taking accountability. We, we shift the blame. Because there's only one of me, there's 35 of you, so the odds are you screwed up, right? <laughs> okay, moving on. A sample of matter. You're just gonna discuss this with your buddy. A sample of matter is constant in its composition, but can be broken down with chemical testing. How would you classify this sample, element, compound, or mixture? Why, or sorry, what is it and why? 10 seconds, ready, go. <laughs> all right, well, that's all right. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. And it's okay. Don't be scared. If you think it's an element, raise your hand. If, if you think it's an element, raise your hand. Okay, if you think it's a compound, raise your hand. If you think it's a mixture, raise your hand. Okay, good. Every once in a while, because a lot of people feel really stupid really fast in AP. And probably all of you are like, I'm the dumbest kid in here, right? What's well, you're not. <laughs> Once in a while, I don't know, this is crazy. Every time I ask for a vote, I want three or four of you to just not vote. Just don't vote. Because then we don't know if you're dumb or you're just not voting because it's your turn to not vote. Does that make sense? Then no one feels stupid and no one looks at someone and says, they're stupid. Does that make sense? Keeps it socially safe. So once in a while, feel free not to vote. And we know, hey, they know it's just their turn to not vote. Okay, moving on. This was correct. It was a compound. All right. It's a compound because compounds are homogenous, but can be broken down through other processes. I put a heart because I am just a sweet guy like that. All right. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Moving on. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about that. Properties and changes of matter. Now, let's we'll just dive into it. You should read tonight. And you should double. We're not done. Don't. Oh, sorry. You're just turning your page. It's like, no, we are not leaving yet. Okay. We have properties of matter. Super simple, because who's heard of physical and chemical properties before? Please remember, some people don't have to vote. So, But hopefully all of you have, because you had uh, Miller, then you had Bishop, then you had, I don't know, Orgel. She's a science teacher, right? Then you had Mr. Hill. Is he a science teacher at ACYI? No? Then you had, okay. But almost every class that you've had science, they've talked about chemical and physical properties. So physical properties can be observed without changing a substance to another substance. So a physical property of me is that I'm super good looking. You can observe that without changing me, all right? A chemical property is that I would burn if you threw me in a fire, but would I be the same after that? No. No, that's a, that's a major change. All right, we're not going to do that test. All right, but boiling. Yeah, that's true. Boiling point. We can see if something boils. And we can turn the heat down, and then we can boil it again. We can turn the heat down, we can boil it again. It's still water. Now it might change state. But it's still the same. Density, mass, volume. Those are examples of physical properties, like the size, the shape of something. Chemical properties can only be observed when a substance sorry, is changed into another substance. So flammability, corrosiveness, reactivity with acids. 
etc. So if it makes it change, then it's a chemical change. If we can't undo what we did, because I've never like burned wood in my fireplace and then hit a switch and it went in reverse. That'd be amazing though, All right? So if we make a major change, it pretty much is gonna be chemical every single time. Physical, it's just something we observe. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Uh, if there's a, if you're lost, it's fine. Okay, you don't really have to do this. Well, you do on the test, but you don't have to do it right now. So it says, write all the following, which are physical. So in your head, just mentally, like put an oval around all the things that are physical properties and do that for about 15 seconds and then turn to your partner and say, hey, these two things are physical. And then they're gonna say, well, that's cool. Well, these two things are physical. You with me? All right, turn and talk, go ahead. Give your give two things that are physical. That's sort of new. All right. Okay, come back. Let's go quick as we can. So I'm going to put uh, oval, whatever. So color, is that physical? Yep. Density? You better have said yes because it was on the slide before. Smell. Mm, smell is extremely questionable. I'll come back and talk about that. All right. Reactivity with acid. No. Anytime I say this, you're like, come on, bro. Like this, it has to react. That means it's chemical. Most of you may not know this word. Malleability, any guesses? It is physical. It means, will it bend? Is that what you're doing? Listen, good. It, it, if you can hit it with a hammer and it like, it dents, it's malleable. If it shatters, it's probably not malleable. We'll test that on someone's car at lunch. All right, conductivity, physical, chemical. It's actually physical. Because I can test whether this thing conducts electricity with a little electricity probe and I can take it away and it hasn't changed, right? It's still there. All right. So conductivity, physical. Flammability. I'm, I've changed my mind. Corrosiveness. Chemical. That means how easily it reacts. So metals corrode. Luster means it's shiny physical All right that faucet is shiny wait i'm looking away oh it's still shiny <laughs> by telling me it was shiny it didn't change it solubility this is the one that kicks everyone's butt all year long what do you think it is physical thank you though it is a physical process and that's because when you drop sugar in yes it seems to disappear but if i evaporate all that water What's right here? All the sugar. All you're really doing, it's like you have a rock and you just hit it with a hammer a ton. Is it still a rock? Yeah, it's just smaller, right? When you dissolve something, all we've really done is taken a big thing and we've broken it into small things that we can't see, but it's there. So dissolving or solubility, meaning the ability to dissolve, that's a physical process. All right. Melting point, what do we got? That's physical. We melt butter, the liquid butter is still butter. All right, tarnish is easily, that's chemical metals, tarnish. Okay, that's actually under test. They're not that exact order, so don't memorize like PC, CC, PC, Russia. All right, classified either as chemical or physical change. We'll come back to there. I wanna make sure we get to at least this far. Um, this is something that's completely new to most of you. Has anyone ever heard this if they hadn't already read last night? Okay. An intensive and extensive property. 
the, the AP test, it, it enjoys these terms and the applications of them. We'll use them throughout like chapter two and three, probably not that much, but we'll get to like chapter seven, chapter 11, chapter 14, whatever. We'll get to where they do matter again. An intensive property is independent of the amount of the substance that is present. Okay. Intensive, independent. Independent means it doesn't matter how much I have. So if I have a one inch long piece of metal versus a 10 inch long piece of metal, they both conduct electricity, right? But it doesn't matter how much metal I have, they still have the ability to conduct. All right, density. To me, this is one of the coolest things in science, and we'll talk about it here in a second. Density is an intensive property. It doesn't matter how much you have. So if you take the density of a penny and the density of a hundred pennies, they're the same, it's the same number, right? All right, boiling point, it doesn't matter how much, and the kids get a little tripped up on this one. It doesn't matter how much water there is to the temperature it boils at. Now, I'm not an idiot. I've cooked ramen versus corn. It takes the big pot of corn a lot longer to, to boil, but does that mean they're boiling at different temperatures? No, it just means there's more stuff, more energy required, but they still boil at the same temperature. All right. Oh, I forgot to go back. Sorry, I forgot to talk about color or smell. Smell is a physical process that happens from a chemical reaction in your nose. <laughs> What's that? Same with, taste. Same with taste. So usually they're not on tests because they're sort of tricky. But something smell is a physical property because I can smell it and it still smells that way later, right? but it does require a chemical reaction. So it's kind of questionable at best. All right, oh crap, we are almost out of here. Extensive properties, they do depend on the amount of substance present. So something's mass is extensive because before summer, my mass was different than after summer because the amount of me changed. <laughs> my body's really good at taking Mountain Dew and converting it to insulation. Yeah, judge me, I dare you. Okay, please read this section for sure. If you're not gonna do anything else, at least read this section right here. It's from the book. That looks ugly. All right, it's about physical properties of matter, chemical properties, and it has extensive and intensive properties described right there. I, what's that? They're not due tonight, but I would do them to stay caught up. Does that make sense? Okay. I think the bell rings in the second. I think the bell should have rang. Oh, there we go. You guys are awesome. Have a great day. Appreciate all you do. Yeah. Yep. You're welcome. One second.